welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. I thought it was about time I did an unboxing boxes episode, mostly because you guys have just been asking me when the next unboxing boxes episode is, and I hadn't really planned one. Had a few things laying around, a couple of things build up while we were away at Computex earlier in the month. So I suppose now is as good as any time to get into it. So let's do that. We'll start with this box here because this one has fragile glass, fragile, do not tip written on it. It's probably been tipped a lot, hopefully. Sounds a bit odd. I'm gonna start with this one though for a reason. Sometimes we do this randomly, but this one has my Asian grocer written on it. And that sounds a bit odd. But for those of you who missed it, we did do a very silly live stream while at Computex. I just realized I picked up this. And I have, bear with me, it's been a while since I've done one of these episodes and I'm forgetting that we have a proper or an official unboxing boxes knife now sent to us by the guys at Sky Soldier Blades. I'll put the link in the video description if you want to know more about this insane knife. Where was I? We did a crazy live stream while at Computex and the plan was to just talk a bit of tech and we got a couple of the local drinks, I suppose, uh, from a 7-Eleven. That was just meant to be a fun taste testing kind of thing that went a bit sideways when all you guys in the comments decided that we should mix all the drinks together at the end and see what that tasted like. And yeah, it didn't taste good. So why I bring that up is because one of our, one of our much loved Patreon members, ZZR Hardy, said, I'm going to order you something from my Asian grocer for the next unboxing boxes. And we have a list here of the drinks. It looks like there's a fair few drinks. Yep, there's a lot of drinks. He said that they shouldn't be bad or there shouldn't be many bad ones. It should be quite interesting. So, wow, okay, there are a lot of drinks here. What I thought we would do is just try these drinks out as I unbox products and I guess I'll comment on how these taste as I unbox new PC hardware. That's now a thing at the channel. I'll probably be doing benchmarks soon while trying interesting drinks. Okay, so just quickly, I'll go through the drinks. This one has no English on it, so that's gonna be a mystery drink. So that'll be fun. This one is calamansi juice drink. Calamansi looks like it's some kind of fruit. Never heard of it. I don't know if it's unusual that I haven't heard of it, but I haven't. We have uh, something else that looks like it'll be a surprise. So not sure what to expect there. Mango sting nectar. Not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Again, something I've never heard of. Uh, grass jelly drink. Am I? Well, that definitely says grass, so I'm not mispronouncing that. Roasted coconut juice. Okay. We have a six pack of Red Bull. <laughs> that is pretty cool. So some Asian Red Bulls. Might only drink one of those or I could be uh, buzzing a bit. And then this has me slightly concerned. Oh, it's probably just glass. That's why it's wrapped up. Where'd I put the big knife? Where's my knife? Spotted it. It's all right. You can all stop looking. I have found it. Yes, it is in a glass bottle and it is bird's nest with panda drink. I'm not making this stuff up. That's really what it says. And yeah, there's some certainly weird stuff in there. I can't wait to drink that one. Anyway, thankfully that brings us to the end. So thank you ZZR Hardy. I will enjoy sampling this as we unbox some boxes. I'll move them all forward here. Sort of semi get them out of the way. All right. Well, actually, we probably should start with one. Let's try a grass jelly drink. Grass jelly drink. Let's uh, kick the show off with one of those. Hmm. It's bringing, bringing back a lot of memories. It smells very much like some sort of Taiwanese tea drink. Yeah. I'll move that over there. It's... Not bad. Now these two packages are from Element83, who is one of our Patreon members. So thank you, mate, for sending these over. I don't know what they are. This one said mouse pad though, and it feels very mouse pad-ish. So 
Hopefully this is work safe sort of stuff. We'll see what we end up with here. The Patreon members like to send me a lot of unusual things like drinks and whatnot. Okay. Well, so far it's looking like the backside of a mouse pad. All right, you guys ready? What are we looking at here? Oh, it's up. <laughs> that is cool. That's awesome. The Patreon members have been hassling me to make a mouse pad and it looks like someone has. They've got one made up, but that is awesome. That is so cool. Wow. I have a good look at it. Wow. I like that. That actually looks pretty good sitting here on the set. So that's might might be where I uh, keep it. Wow. Thank you very much for that. That is, that's awesome. That's got me a bit excited to see what's in the next box because I wasn't, wasn't expecting something that nice. So whatever is in this package has been ordered from JM Mods. So you can get all kinds of custom stuff from them. So yeah, hopefully there's some cool stuff in here. And again, this is from Element83. So we'll see what else he's, he's ordered. But yeah, more, he's already won me over with the mouse pad. That is seriously cool. Okay, we just got a bit of white foam at this point. If I can get that out. That always makes a bit of mess in the office more fragile handle with care stuff. So we've got, oh, what? That looks pretty cool. Yep, so it is from JM Mods. You can go to jmmods.com to get this kind of stuff. It's looking very cool indeed. All right, so let's start with this uh, big thing here. We've got a couple of thermal pads and stuff like that. So I'm not sure how that all goes together, but this is looking like a graphics card backplate and wow. Wow. That is awesome. Wow. So it looks like it's got LED backlighting of some description. Probably, yep, RGB lighting. Nice flexible cable that. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say about that. That looks incredible. Really nice work there by JM Mods. Love that. And again, thank you, Element83. And the last little package here. Oh, wow. That is also very awesome. Little hardware unboxed. Uh, I think that would be an SSD sort of cover. You put that on top of the SSDs. But I mean, that would look cool just mounted anywhere in a system, really. Might try and put that in the background or something. But uh, that is awesome. Really awesome. Well, once again, thank you very much, Element83. You guys really do spoil me sometimes. Loving these. And I think that deserves another drink. I'm going to put these just safely out of the way. Well, I'm going to celebrate that with some calamansi juice. See what, uh, I don't really want to open it on the mouse pad. Woo. Woo. Smells very lemony. Citrusy. Oh, very citrusy. That's lovely. Oh. Well, that's enough of that one for now. Whew. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's see what's in this little package here. Let's see what's in this guy. Are you ready? Oh, another cool product. This is the new Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro DDR4 memory. And it's the 4000 kit. DDR4 4000. 4, 8 gigabyte sticks, 32 gigabytes. That will be worth a small fortune. Let's have a look at this stuff. For those of you who aren't aware, Corsair has had RGB memory for a while now in their Vengeance series. And you can see some of it there. Uh, but it's not the most flashy and showy of the RGB memories available out there. So they stepped it up a notch with their Pro Series, which they unveiled at Computex. And we featured it in one of our videos. And I reckon this stuff 
is now some of the best, if not the best looking RGB memory on the market. The effects that it does are really cool and it's just really vibrant. I'll throw up some B-roll so you guys can see how good they look. But uh, yeah, really cool memory. And the cool stuff about this memory is it's not just about all the flashy RGB lighting and that kind of stuff, even though they are quite impressive in that regard. But they're available in a wide range of frequencies. So as I said, this is 4000, so that's extremely fast memory. Don't know how high we'll be able to get it with Ryzen, second gen Ryzen, but we'll give that a go in a later uh, video. But anyway, some very cool memory there from Corsair. I'll put some links in the video description so you guys can check pricing and availability of all the different uh, models. But anyway, I'm sure the B-roll of this memory looked very impressive, very flashy, and all that good stuff. Oh, and before we move on from the memory, we might try some Foco pomegranate juice drink. Give that a shot. See what that's all about. This could be... Uh, Interesting, again, another juice fruit thing that I've never heard of before. Hmm. This one's, wow. I don't know how to describe that. It smells very sweet, but I can't place it. It's so unusual. Anyway, we'll give it a go. Yeah, it's not bad. It's just not that, not that much flavor to it. Anyway, moving right along. Whoa, okay. That is a lot of what looks to be thermal paste. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, I think, perhaps. And is it all the same? Is it all the same? Is it all the same? Right, so what we have here is more than half a dozen of Arctic's uh, thermal compound, their MX4 stuff, which I do use on a daily basis. So they sent me a big, huge tube of that uh, not that long ago. But anyway, I've used nearly half of it, so it was about time, or won't be too long before I need more. And they've sent me a heap of convenient sizes. So uh, yeah, I've got loads of this stuff for when I'm testing CPUs. As you can imagine, I go through a lot of thermal paste because every time I test or change a CPU, more thermal paste is required. Every time I change a cooler, more thermal paste is required. So we go through boatloads of it. So a big thank you to Arctic for sending this over so I don't have to go rummaging through old product boxes trying to find tubes of thermal paste. Very handy indeed. And this stuff is really good. I do recommend using it. Um, probably not the best performing thermal paste you can come across. It's certainly very good. Uh, there isn't a huge amount of difference between the various thermal pastes out there, but in terms of value, it is very good. It's not stupidly priced like some of them are. So really good thermal paste that does the job well and lasts a long time. They've got an eight year durability uh, sort of guarantee on the packet. So if you are happen to install your CPU and then not do anything with your system for eight years, then that's really good value. All right, we'll move that all over there. I think I'll save the old bird's nest for last because not only does it look kind of nasty, it, uh, it's also one of the more interesting sounding ones that I can actually pronounce. So we'll leave that there. We'll go for this concoction. Uh, kind of looks like an up and go. Pretty sure it's not an up and go. But well, I'm not pretty sure. I don't really know. But anyway, we'll give it a go. And then we'll get into the next the next package. Mm, that's, um, yeah, that's, that's triggering a bit of a gag reflex there. That smells, whew, that smells a lot like the peanut rice milk. That was one of the worst, absolute worst ones uh, we drank at Computex. It was very, it's had a very strong peanut butter kind of smell, which I suppose isn't that bad. But it, the taste was overwhelming and it just had the it, the viscosity or whatever you want to call it. It was just weird. Um, and this is, this is a little bit like that. So I feel like I should move the mouse pad. But I won't. We'll give it a go. Mm. Yeah, okay. That's actually not too bad. It smells way worse, probably just because of the experience I had not that long ago. But uh, yeah, it's, 
it's okay. Ugh, I'm not sure I'll finish that one, but cheers. All right, let's move it right along. Uh, what do we got here? Oh, I think we have something kind of exciting in this. It probably would have been exciting six months ago. Maybe not that long ago, but a little while ago, if it's what I think it is. Oh, well, that sneak peek didn't uh, give anything away. But if it is what I think it is, I'll have a lot of benchmark updating to do. So let's have a look. Let's have a look. Is it what I think it is? Hmm. Yes, it is what I think it is. <sighs> Can't believe it's taken me this long. I finally have a custom Vega 64 graphics card and I have word that Vega 56 is on the way so I can redo my GTX 1070 Ti versus Vega 56 comparison. And I will be doing a Vega 64 versus GTX 1080 comparison in the next few weeks once I get testing. But yeah, so these have been extremely difficult to come by. I realize it's now quite late in the product cycle and you guys, or a lot of you probably aren't that interested in buying what's still a current generation graphics card because the next generation hopefully won't be too far away. But if you're in desperate need of a graphics card update and you can't wait however many more months it's going to be before we get new graphics cards, then these are an option. And this is the first time I have held this particular model and it's the first time I've received a custom Vega graphics card of any description. So that is a mammoth heatsink, big three fan cooler, nice back plate. And yeah, so hopefully that performs a lot better than the reference air cooled model that I have. I do have Vega 64 liquid as well. But anyway, it's kind of a relief, kind of nice to finally get one of these and sort of test it out. And then we won't have all the problems we have when we do those comparisons where I'm using a reference card versus a custom Pascal card. So. Thank you very much to ASUS for sending this along. And that deserves to be celebrated with a drink. Let's go with this one here that I don't know what it is. Milkies? Milkies? Sounds like something one of my kids would say. Okay, it's sort of... It looks like some of the uh, fancy coolants you see. It's kind of what transparent almost, but whitish, and it's swirling a bit, and... A little bit like this stuff. Anyway, we'll give it a go. And it smells like nothing, so. Hmm. It's actually quite nice, but again, I can't really explain it. Or describe it. It's kind of like, uh, it's a fizzy drink. It's a kind of soft drink. It's kind of like lemonade, I suppose, is the closest thing I can come up with. It's kind of like a nicer version of your typical lemonade. Yeah, I quite like that. I might finish that one later. I'm putting a lot of drinks here near my expensive computer. Anyway, okay. Well, we're gonna have to do a bit of drink testing. I was gonna say drink drinking at, at the end of this one because I'm running out of packages here. I've only got, well, we know what that is. So we'll get into that one last. And we have two boxes stuck together in this one. Okay, we have what looks to be the world's smallest mouse potentially in that one. And in this we have, oh, I've heard a lot about this thing. This is the Swift Point Z. Um, not the Swift Point Z, Swift Point Z is how the, uh, the makers of this mouse pronounce it, but I'll probably alternate between both. It'll be the Swift Point Z and the Swift Point Z, depending on how I feel at the time. This is a very expensive mouse, but it's also a very, very unique, let's say. Uh, I obviously haven't used it. This is the first time I've ever got it, but it has a gyro in it and it can just do pretty much everything you could ever imagine a mouse doing. It does pretty much more than any other mouse that's ever come before it. I think it 
costs around $230 US, so just a quick heads up on that, but there'll be some links in the video description to check it out. Uh, and I'm not going to even come close to covering everything this thing can do. I quickly checked it out when they, uh, when the makers of the mouse said they were sending it, had a quick look at it, and uh, it was quite overwhelming, the list of features and things that it could do, which you'll sort of get some idea of in a moment as we go through just some of the stuff that comes with it. As, actually, before I pull that out, as you can see, you get this kind of cool little kit with the mouse plus a million little things that can be modified on it. So honestly, for an unboxing boxes episode, I don't even really know where to start with this thing. Uh, I feel like you've probably got to use it for a while to understand everything that it can do and how it works and how well it works. And I will be using this as my daily driver from this moment forward. So the second I wrap this episode up, I'm going to take this upstairs and start using it straight away. Hopefully fit in a couple of games tonight if I get a chance. So as I said, I'm really not going to be able to do this one justice in an unboxing boxes episode because there just are so many features and uh, aspects of this mouse. And it's kind of one of those mice that sounds too good to be true, or one of those products that sounds too good to be true because it really sounds like it can do it all. And some of the stuff that they claim it can do is just amazing. So I want to give it a go, a really good go, and see if it is all that it's cracked up to be. But on the back here, one of the coolest features it can do is when you're gaming, to look sort of left or right, you can tilt the mouse. So you can be using the mouse as you normally would while be gaming, and then you can just tilt it ever so slightly and your character in a first person shooter if the game supports that, which most do, will sort of, will tilt. And you can tilt and fire rather than having to use a keyboard control to do that. So it allows you to do a lot more with your, with your mouse controls. So by default, it comes with the, so the tilt pieces installed and I can clearly feel that the mouse rocks from left to right. So um, it's, it's not, I don't know, it'd definitely take a bit of getting used to it. Feels kind of strange to me. It feels like there's something under the mouse. But again, I haven't used it yet, so I can't really comment on how well it does or doesn't work. Uh, but then if I put uh, this piece in, if I can work out how this piece goes in. So if you put in these pieces with the number three on it, with the little lock, that basically locks out your tilt. So now it's just a traditional mouse that you can't take advantage of the tilt with. Then there are a heap of other buttons. So you've got your two main clickers, then there's these two secondary clickers here, and then a third row up here. Um, and they can also be clicked sort of, you can pull them back to click, so they click upwards, or you can click down on them. So there's just so many different ways you can use this mouse. And then you can change the size of the rubber pads that go on those clickers. So now that one's easier to access. And then these little quick fire buttons down here, you can pop a little tab that makes that way easier to reach. You've got your normal clicker, then you can pull back and hit that one like that. And then for the one here, you can hit it with your finger like that, or you could pull back on it if you wanted to. So yeah, I mean, if you're pretty good at adjusting to different mice setups, then this mouse will be something that you'll really enjoy. And for these buttons that are the, the secondary buttons, you can either have that big piece there or a smaller one, depending on which one you prefer to keep it more out of the way. And then for these two top buttons, again, there's sort of a lower profile. I don't know how well you can see that. I'm after to do some B-roll. But you've got a low profile switch and then a sort of taller profile switch, less low profile. That makes perfect sense. That one sort of gets more in the way for me, but it is easy to click as well, so I don't know, it depends on what you prefer. Then of course you've got two buttons here, you've got two buttons on the on the right side as well that you can activate with your thumb. So there is a hell of a lot of buttons on this mouse. And it doesn't say on the box, but there's a lot, a lot. And then comes with software so you can program all the buttons to do different things and set it all up. It has a lift off mode which you can use for flight, you know, if you're playing Battlefield or something like that and you jump in a plane, you can lift the mouse off and use the gyro to fly, so that's pretty insane. There's a whole lot of crazy stuff this mouse claims to do really well, so I'm keen to start testing out and see how well it does. But again, if you want to check it out for yourself, there is a link in the video description. And I read a, quite a few uh, user reviews and they all seemed very positive. There are a couple of negative reviews as there always is, but most of them were from Mac users who were claiming that it doesn't work with Mac. Uh, there is no, it says 
uh, Microsoft or Windows and Apple down the bottom there. So I don't know if those claims are true or if they had some early Mac, Apple support issues. I don't know. Or it could just be that those using Apple products are still trying to grasp the concept of having more than one mouse button. So that's quite possible as well. So that is an awesome looking mouse. Great little accessory kit there. I'm keen to plug that in and start testing out to see if it really is as good as it claims to be. Oh, and I almost forgot there's a second little package here they've sent along. I don't know what this one's all about. I thought at first this might be sort of an accessory for that mouse if there wasn't already enough with it. But it turns out that it is a Swiftpoint GT mouse. Okay, so with this one we get a neat little carry case, little pouch thing to put it in. Looks quite good. Open it up and we have this thing. That. So what we have here is the little USB dongle, which would be a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi dongle. That plugs into your laptop and then you can charge this little guy using that. So it just clips on like that. It's very powerful, the magnet. So it's magnetic. So that holds on there. You could actually leave it plugged in the side of your laptop to hold it as well. So you'd plug that in to charge it up. Once it's charged, you just leave that in your laptop. You take this out and this replaces your mouse. So it moves around. Probably need to get some B-roll of that. Um, but it's surprisingly comfortable and it can work next to like your trackpad on your laptop because it's that small, it fits there quite nicely. So a really cool feature about this little compact tiny mouse. So you've got your left and right clickers there. You've got a scroll wheel there. But the really cool thing is it's got like a stylus tip, like a, a sort of the point of a stylus embedded in the bottom there. So when you're moving it around as you normally would with a mouse using, you know, the mouse sensor and using the clickers, you can also tilt it to the right and then swipe it and move it around to use the kind of stuff you would do with a stylus. So it makes sort of touch screen stuff, scrolling around screens and stuff rather than using the wheel to slowly scroll sideways, you can do that to sort of flick left and right. So that's really interesting. Again, another mouse or sort of, it's probably more than just a mouse, but anyway, another peripheral from SwiftPoint that I am keen to give a go and see if it's uh, all it's cracked up to be. Interesting little device there. Again, I will provide a link in the video description for you guys to check it out and a bit more, get a bit more info on it. I think it's time for some roasted coconut juice. What do you reckon? I reckon it's a good time for that. I've got a lot of uh, open cans over there. I better be careful not to knock any of that off. All right, roasted coconut juice. Let's see what that is all about. Well, I can confirm there's bits of coconut floating around in this juice. That doesn't smell good. That doesn't smell good at all. Mm, damn it. All right. Whoa, that smells really bad. That's enough of that one. Moving right along that. Oh, I don't even, that just tastes wrong. Oh, crazy bad aftertaste. Okay, you guys are probably familiar with Corsair's new Crystal 280X case, but I now have one. It is in, I think, the black finish, which is, I think, probably the better looking finish of the two options, black and white. But we'll open this up and get a closer look at it. Well, I've got to say, this case looks quite good in black. I saw it only in white at Computex, and I was a bit, uh, I don't know if I like that. It just didn't, I don't know, the white bits here with the, the sort of the, uh, what would you say, the tinted glass, the smoked glass. It just didn't, I don't know, it didn't work that well for me. I didn't like it. I don't know if you guys agree if you've seen the white one or what you think, but the black one sort of blends together a bit more, looks a bit cleaner, uh, in my opinion. But basically this is a dual chamber case. So on this side here, which is the, the main chamber, you can put a micro ATX motherboard, uh, all the other bits, your graphics card and all that kind of cool stuff. Then around the back side here, we have sort of the secondary chamber. Can I undo these? Yes. They're not, uh, uh, sometimes these thumb screws get done up extremely tight from factory, but not the case here. So in the back here, it looks like we can put a pair of three and a half inch drives 
it looks like three two and a half inch drives so your ssds and then in the bottom here a power supply and it looks like you're not really limited on the length of the power supply too much though the longer you go the less of these cable management holes you'll have then it looks like we've got some lighting control in here for the fans because it does come with a pair of corsair nope just one sorry rewind because it does come with a corsair fan in the front a 120 millimeter rgb fan so that is quite nice nothing in the back in fact there's no uh, possibility for any rear exhaust fans it looks like they would go on the top ah so there is a second rgb fan on the top i know a lot about the standard configuration of this case so a 120 millimeter fan in the top and in the front so that's a nice configuration there uh, you don't, usually don't get the high quality uh, fans out of the box but that's kind of cool and then at the top here we have front io which is a pair of usb 3 ports no type c and then power and reset buttons and you've got just your standard audio jack so you know fairly standard io there nothing too fancy type c would have been nice i think a few of you will be a bit upset that's not included but then some people claim that there's really no need for those and they don't use them anyway so i don't know which side of the the fence you stand on that one and then we've got a dust filter in it's an external dust filter as well magnetic i think yes magnetic dust filter that just clips on there nicely looks like you can install a fan on this panel as well looks like it's about the 140 millimeter variety but i could be wrong i don't have a fan laying around anywhere so can't confirm that right now but yeah it has to be said i do much prefer this case in the black finish it just as I said, it looks much cleaner, sort of goes together a bit of the white, just, yeah, did, just didn't work for me. So let me know what you guys think if you think that the black version of the 280X just looks a bit more sleek, a bit nicer, and if that's the, the colour choice you would prefer. And on that note, I think it's time for another drink. So what have we got? Oh, leave the bird's nest still. Okay, so we have the Mangosteen or Mangosteen Nectar, whichever one of the two that is. And yeah, I think we'll just jump straight into this one. I have... No idea what to expect here. I don't know if my, I've had a bit of a cold lately, so my my sense of smells a bit off. But it smells kind of like, or actually a lot like, a lot like passion fruit. So it smells, yeah, very sweet, quite a nice smell. So I don't know if that's accurate or not, but that's what it smells like to me. We'll give it a go. Hmm. It's quite nice. Uh, it's not exactly what I expected, but yeah, it's kind of passion fruity, kind of. It's probably the best way I could describe it. But if anyone else has had this before and they do or don't agree with me, let me know what you think it tastes like. I suspect it tastes a lot like mangosteen or mangosteen, but whatever that is. All right, we'll do it. We'll have the bird's nest. We're gonna drink the bird ne bird's nest. I'll try and get some B-roll this as well because it's um, it's kind of weird. Actually, it's probably a way to open that without a knife. It is just a drink. Calm down. Don't have to unbox everything. Look at that, I did it. So what we're having here is just a classic bird's nest drink. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna approach this one with a bit of caution because it smells like nothing. And generally when they smell like nothing, in my experience, they're kind of bad. It's definitely not just water. Hmm, it's actually quite sweet. Okay, the liquidy part of it's quite nice. The bird's nesty part of it's quite like, quite uh, chunky and weird tasting and off-putting. So, anyway, not as bad as I thought it would be, but also not something I would like to drink. Not a big Red Bull drinker, I have to say, but I uh, do like the Red Bull F1 team, so that's probably why ZZR Hardy bought me some Asian Red Bulls. But I do know what a Red Bull tastes like, so I'll uh, be able to tell you how close this is to uh, the sort of Western Red Bull it smells very much like a Red Bull, which is your yeah, smells like it's not fit for human consumption and it'll probably burn a hole in your body. So good Red Bull stuff. And it looks 
sort of the orange petrol-y colour that Red Bull normally looks like. So about to see if I'm going to get some wings or a trip to the doctor's. It's kind of like... It's kind of like the Red Bull we get, but it tastes flat. Like, it's not very carbonated. It's more like Red Bull juice. Yeah, don't really like that one at all. That's disappointing. I was hoping for a nice Red Bull or perhaps a slightly different version of the Red Bull, Red Bull we get. But yeah, it just tastes like, yeah, Red Bull juice is probably the best way I could describe it. It's just like flat. So yeah, that was a disappointing way to end it. But nevertheless, thank you very much, ZZR Hardy, for sending all those drinks. They were quite interesting. There are a couple there that I enjoyed, so that was good. Then a big thank you to Element83 for sending not only this amazing mouse pad, which I very much love and will probably end up staying here now. Uh, this is just amazing, this graphics card backplate. I don't know what graphics card I should put this on. It's really impressive. I don't know if there's a graphics card that would, would do this justice. But if you guys have a suggestion for what graphics card I should put this on, like that. So your graphics card is sitting in your computer like that, and that's how it would look from the top. So let me know what graphics card you think would do this justice because yeah, I absolutely love it. It's almost too good to put inside a PC. Certainly wouldn't be putting it on a graphics card that's uh, mounted like that because then you won't be able to see it because it will be on the back side, of course. And then this little thing, this little SSD cover. So that would mount up something like that. If you, I don't even know if that's in the shot. But yeah, that looks really cool as well. So I'll uh, definitely install that in my system. But anyway, big thank you for sending that stuff. Big thank you to Asus for finally sending me a custom Vega 64 graphics card, and I'm looking forward to the Vega 56 model, which I'm also told is on the way. Uh, pretty keen to do some sort of build in this. Hopefully I have the opportunity to do a micro ATX build in the not too distant future. Are there any X470 micro ATX boards yet? I don't think there is, but if someone makes one, it would be cool to do a second gen Ryzen build in that. I will be installing this Corsair memory in a build. I might even put it in this system here. So actually, I can probably shut this system down and put it in and it could work. Let's try that quickly. There we go. Now you can see the original Corsair RGB memory next to the new Pro Series memory. And this Threadripper system will have no idea what is going on memory wise because we just have randomly populated uh, dim slots, but that's fine. And yeah, so you can see them side by side there. I reckon the new stuff looks absolutely fantastic. But as always, I'll be interested to see what you guys think. So I think that about wraps up this episode of Unboxing Boxes. One of my uh, favorite episodes so far for sure. We had some, some interesting drinks to keep us entertained along the way. Love this stuff, of course, and my mouse pad. Really, really cool. Can't, uh, can't believe how cool that stuff is. I'll get some photos and put them on Twitter, Instagram when I finally install them in my system. You may see them in a future video, who knows? Thank you to Arctic for my more than one dozen thermal paste tubes. That'll come in very handy. Um, if I get a chance tonight, I will... I'm trying to find it. I've got stuff everywhere. I'll give this mouse a go. I uh, might try some Overwatch or something with it and a few other games. And while I am gaming with the new Swift Point mouse, Swift Point Z, or Z, I will, well I know I don't like that one. Oh, I definitely didn't like that one. Uh, I think this one was, so that's the okay pile. Oh, apologies for that. That's the roasted coconut, that's nasty. That's in the no good pile. Ah, that's the good tasting lemonade. Good tasting lemonade, love that. Oh, I already. Yep. Ah, uh, the grass jelly, that was okay. Not great, not terrible. And meh, pretty pretty meh. So we got three like okay drinks. If you were dying of thirst and there was nothing else available, they'd probably work. You'd have to be pretty close to death to take anything out of that pile. And then this is the only one that's actually nice. And we then of course we have the 
the juice bull, the, the Red Bull juice, which is okay. A bit disappointed I was looking forward to drinking that whole uh, six pack there while I game tonight, but that's not going to happen. I can probably come up with something better. I'll finish this one off in a moment. So anyway, thank you for watching this episode of Unboxing Boxes While Drinking Mostly Rubbish Drinks. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll catch you again really soon for some more videos.